Beautiful sunny day. Out exploring this hill above a mineralized zone and we're finding some float samples here. You can see the pyrite there. This looks like it comes from a solid stringer of iron pyrite. Here's a piece as well that has quartz and fine grained pyrite. They just logged this upper area, so we're hoping that something's exposed. Some nice samples though. Something interesting I see. This is your typical bedrock here, but there's hordes and hordes of granitic float boulders all over the place. So, same kind of stuff as you see down below in the zone. A little bit of disseminated pyrite. A little bit of a rock outcropping here. I'm gonna check out this area where all these float rocks are. Another interesting thing is up here. You can see up on the ridge where that white is. Basically from here all the way over the other side of the mound, a few hundred meters, there's a quartz vein exposed. And when you get close to the top, it's exposed over a width of about 15 meters, so like 45 feet. If you got any kind of mineral associated with that vein, then uh, it might be worthwhile to, to chase, but we took a scan over top, we couldn't see much, but definitely might be worth trenching up there as well. Who knows if you rip into it, could start to become mineralized like a lot of the other veins on this property. Right on the top center of the mound. And you can see the oxidized area here. This is schist. And uh, there's a little bit of pyrite in there. But if you were to punch into this about two, three feet or a good meter, you'd uh, hit some sulfides. Generally, it peters out when it comes to surface. See, here's some quartz right down here. So there's definitely some mineral up here. I think there's something really nice and fat down below. So this oxidized portion here, you can see little areas like that where sulfides used to be. Definitely used to have some mineral here, but pyrite is very unstable in weathering will cause it to erode out, leaving your oxidation staining. Over here, we have a little bit of a vein. Again, you have weathered quartz here. You can see the little bugs where iron pyrite used to be. Probably a little calcopyrite in here too. A little bit of a vein here. We're going to work this little area here, see if we can uh, find a sample or two, anything substantial. A bit more exposed. So there's definitely quartz here. A nice vein back in there, pulling out some chunks here. So it doesn't look like there's much sulfides left, I'll erode it out. But, uh, might be a good sample to take because elements like gold, they don't deteriorate. So they'll remain in the rock. 
So we've widened our hole and you can see the quartz down in there. Just super deteriorated. Here's some of the oxidized quartz. Just so deteriorated. But that's definitely a vein. Looks like a substantial size too. And everything always widens at depth here, so could go bigger. We're definitely onto the quartz here. Look at how deteriorated it is. It's part of the vein there. Another very good indication we're onto something. These are a couple grab samples from this area. Obviously they were ripped out from somewhere in the 10 meter vicinity of this dug up area. But you have little bits of calcopyrate, which would indicate you have some sort of copper deposit here. And if it's anything like ones in the area, you got good silver, gold, copper, a little bit of zinc. We got our samples, so let's move on. See if we can find anything else before we run out of daylight. Float rock that I found on the way down. You can see a lot of iron sulfides in there. A little bit of calcopyrite, but mostly pyrite. Nice big hunk here, obviously from a uh, semi-massive vein. Even they like the minerals. Just on our way down now, we found a bunch of float samples and this is kind of typical for the bedrock in the area. You see stringers of iron sulfides. Some quartz associated with it, some chlorite. Some of the samples are semi-massive and massive pyrite. Hammer a couple of these open. This is a really nice one here. Some more here. Most of these have fairly low values when you just see the straight iron pyrite and schists. Definitely low base metal values. You might have a little gold and silver in there. Well, that's it. We're out of here. It's getting dark. So we have to head out. See you later, guys.